Okay, let me start over everyone. I apologize about that. Anyway, welcome to Securing Your Data on AWS. This is a joint webinar between Amazon Web Services and Okta. Uh, we hope that you'll learn how Okta's platform can help you achieve your identity and security goals in the cloud and extends the native capabilities of AWS. Uh, my name is Patrick McDowell, and I'm a security systems architect at AWS who focuses on our security partner segment. I help our partners, such as Okta, design and architect their products to run on AWS. And joining me today on the webinar is Stephen Lee, the Director of Business Development at Okta. So the cost of a data breach keeps increasing. Not only will it cost your business significant financial hardship, and as you can see, that's about $6.5 million uh, in damage as the average rate per breach, but you, as you can also see, about 70% of customers would try to avoid businesses who experienced a security breach. And as everyone knows, identity is a critical component in assuring that your sensitive data is only accessed by approved parties and users, which is why Okta has such a strong value proposition. Um, so AWS can actually be more secure than your existing environment. And by running your workloads in AWS, you inherit security controls that you would never that you were never able to have on premises. You gain insight across your entire environment via just a single API call. We are seeing a significant trend of businesses choosing AWS just for the security posture to gain alone. Um, Rob Alexander, the CIO of Capital One, stated publicly that he believes AWS enables Capital One to operate more securely in the public cloud than they could in their on-premises data centers. So uh, at AWS, security will always be our top priority. And in order to secure customer workloads, we have a shared responsibility model of the customer. AWS manages and controls the components from the host operating system and virtualization layer down to the physical security of the facilities in which the services operate. And AWS customers are responsible for building secure applications. We provide a wide variety of best practice documents, encryption tools, and other guidance our customers can leverage during application level security to deliver uh, application-level security measures. In addition, AWS partners, like Okta, offer products and features to help customers meet their security objectives. The shared responsibility model follows the premise that you cannot deploy secure applications by yourself because you have to rely on AWS. And we cannot secure things for you because we do not have access into your EC2 instances or identity stores. It takes AWS, our partners, like Okta, and our customers working together to create a truly secure environment. Um, customers have the responsibilities to choose such things as where you store the data, what type of encryption you use, and how you build your applications, and who should have access to those workloads. The customers are also responsible for such things as patching, patching operating systems and defining their desired network security controls. AWS, we refer to our side of the shared responsibility of security of the cloud, and the customers are responsible for security in the cloud. One of the great things about cloud is that AWS customers inherit all the best practices of AWS policies, architecture, and operational processes built to satisfy, satisfy the requirements of our most security sensitive customers. AWS actually manages 1,800 plus security controls, so you don't have to. However, the important thing to remember is just is that you always maintain full ownership and control of your data. So uh, AWS, we have have built a world-class team of security experts monitoring our systems 24-7 to, to protect your customer content. We also provide native security uh, services and deeper visibility into what is happening in your environment. Our login service, AWS CloudTrail, provides visibility into AWS API activity that has occurred in your environment. This includes something as large as deleting a data volume to simply disconnecting a virtual network interface. In addition, AWS Inspector is an automated security assessment service that helps improve the security and compliance of applications deployed on AWS. Amazon Inspector automatically assesses applications for vulnerabilities or deviations from best practices. And after performing the assessment, it produces a detailed report that can be sent to you so you can remediate. So availability and reliability are one of the main reasons our cloud business has grown as fast as it has. AWS builds its data centers in multiple geographic regions as well as across multiple availability zones within each region to offer maximum resiliency against system outages. The AWS cloud now operates in, with 38 availability zones with 14 geographic regions around the world. Our newest region, Ohio, just opened up last week. 
And we have a total of nine more availability zones and four more regions coming online throughout the next year. AWS designs its data centers with significant excess bandwidth connections so that if a major disruption occurs, there is sufficient capacity to enable traffic to be load balanced between remaining sites, minimizing the impact on customers. So AWS integrates nicely with your existing resources you might have elsewhere, say on-premises. And in addition to the broadest and deepest set of capabilities and services, uh, we provide such tools for enterprise customers to integrate with their on-premise environment, such as our VPC and Direct Connect. Um, Direct Connect provides a dedicated low latency connection to provide direct access between AWS and your current data center. And then we have tools like AWS Key Management Service, known as KMS, and Cloud HSM, which can help manage the full lifecycle and access of your cryptographic keys. AWS Key Management Service is a managed service that makes it easy for you to create and control encryption keys, encrypt your data, and protect your data. And it's backed by hardware security modules um, to uh, protect the uh, security of your keys. So AWS has achieved a number of internationally recognized certifications and accreditations, demonstrating compliance with third-party assurance frameworks such as ISO 27001, PCI, SOC 1, SOC 2 and 3, HIPAA, and FedRAMP. And we're always listening for more customer feedback uh, to see what other certifications we should achieve in the future. Um, our, accredita our accreditation reports, our certification documentation are available for review uh, for, to our customers who are under NDA with us. The most important thing to understand, though, is just because you are running your PCI application in AWS, this does not make you PCI compliant. Uh, PCI compliance is a joint effort of the shared responsibility model. And we have customers in all possible segments uh, consuming AWS, including industries that are typically slower to adopt, such as oil and gas, financial services, and healthcare. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Stephen Lee. He's the Director of Business Development and Partner Solutions at Okta. And he's going to dive deep in the Okta platform and how it seamlessly integrates with AWS and how it makes using AWS uh, easy. Great. Um, thank you, Patrick. Uh, Stephen Lee, Director of Business Development and Partner Solutions at Okta. Very happy um, to be on this call. Um, if you look at Okta, and I've been with Okta for, for five years and a bit, it's, it's a product that was born and built in the cloud. I mean, from the day we started the company, um, Okta was always meant to be a cloud service. Now, before I joined Okta, I actually worked for another company that built on-premise identity management software. And I was there for many, many years. And when we look at the identity management space, we, we quickly realized that you cannot bring an on-premise piece of identity management software and just deploy it in the cloud and, and turn it into a SaaS product. You cannot just go and deploy Active Directory in the cloud and get sort of all the features and everything that you get out of a product like Okta. And that was the number one thing. We realized that we have to roll the product out and run it in the, in the cloud. Um, the second thing, our goal is to try to connect to everything. Things are changing. And, and honestly, when I look back four or five years ago when I first started at Okta, web app was the king. But then very quickly, we're all walking around with iPads and phones and things like that. So the technology is changing. The apps are changing what we as end users, our habits, the devices that we carry, it, all that is changing. And it's important for us to be neutral. Um, we're, we're totally independent, we're unbiased, and our goal is to make sure that we connect our customers to any technology that they want to do. And, and that's very important to preserve the choice. Um, and in order to do that, you know, and, and we need a very robust platform, and we run on AWS. And, and that really gives us that foundation to build a very robust and secure um, product on top of, um, as you see from Patrick, all the certifications and assurance programs that, that AWS has gone through. We can sit on top of that. But in addition to that, we also have to do some extra work. Um, the Okta product is, is built out of multiple products. And with that, it, it basically splits the audience into two. Um, there's, a, there's a product for IT and there's a product for developers. For IT, People are leveraging Okta for employees, for rolling out applications, dealing with um, the, what I call the identity life cycle. So someone joins the company, a new hire, how do you go through that initial um, onboarding phase to get people what they need to have access to? Then you go through um, while the person's in the company, moving around maybe from one location to another or getting promoted or move from one department to another. 
How do you make sure authorization and things are handled correctly? And then, of course, all the way to the very end when someone leaves the company, how do you then disable access? How do you then make sure that there's a good transition um, for, for, for that um, offboarding process? This is all very important, and, and it's especially more important in the cloud world because I think back in the day, if everything was behind the firewall and you stopped the, the employee from going to work, P or she basically can't access a lot of things, but now we're all using cloud products, and AWS included, right? Salesforce, Slack, Box, all these type of products. Um, if you don't terminate the access, then, then technically the person can still have access after he or she leaves the company, so that's very important. So that allows us to, to, to enable the IT transformation that a lot of CIOs are taking on today. But when you decide to then build your product on top of Okta. And if you think of every company today as a technology company, every company is building portals, building external phasing apps, even stuff that we do every day. You go maybe order a coffee or sign up, uh, um, get, get your airline tickets or book a hotel room. That's all technology sitting behind it. And identity is a core piece. You're always logging in with users. You're always dealing with passwords. Um, for sensitive industries, you may be prompted to do second factor authentication. All that is, is a huge identity infrastructure that all these companies will have to worry about. And for that, we provide value for developers. We allow you to then build your application on top of us, whether it's a web app for internal use or a SaaS app if you're an ISV for your customers or building mobile apps for your consumers. We give you that identity layer so that you can provide just the right level of identity. Um, and you don't have to worry about it, and you can then basically focus in your own business. Now, the product itself um, has, has multiple sort of mini individual products within it. And if you look at this, this slide right here, um, going from sort of left to right, starting with single sign-on, a core piece, right? At the end of the day, we do not want to log in with um, too many usernames and password. If you think about a personal kind of uh, analogy, a lot of us are logging into various applications with, with your Facebook account. I log into Spotify with my Facebook account, and it's precisely that, right? Traditionally, people log into their domain with their AD credentials, you do control alt delete and that gets you to many applications. And the problem becomes a little harder when you're starting to use SaaS apps. So single sign-on is, is, is the, one of the most important things that we do provide. And it's not just about user experience, it's also about IT controlling security, because now you have that single point to control access, knowing that there's only one account that an end user is using to have access to all the corporate apps. Now underneath that, to, to be able to facilitate this, you need a record of every user, so a profile. So we have Universal Directory, that's a, a core piece of infrastructure in the product. Think of LDAP, Active Directory, in the past that you have to manage on-prem, we now have this universal directory that would carry the same set of features, but in the cloud. It's something that's managed by us, so as your company grow from, let's say, 50 users to maybe 10,000, 20,000, scalability, XA, all that is none of your concern. We'll take care of it. And once we have all this user info, we can then drive what we call life cycle. So that's what I talked about, the life cycle management of onboarding a user, offboarding a user, things that happen in between. And it's not just about users, it's about rolling out devices and things like that. So lifecycle management, workflow, automated provisioning, that's all part of the product. And then moving into API access management, it, it, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe it was all web app. We have mobile apps, but now we're also talking about APIs. End users are actually going through um, a lot of APIs without themselves knowing it. Pro products, components are talking to each other using API, and identity is actually flowing through. So part of Part of our cloud product gives you the ability to also manage um, API access via technology like OAuth, OpenID, and things like that. Um, adaptive, so adaptive multi-factor authentication. I mentioned two-factor, so that's something that a lot of you might be familiar with. You know, uh, uh, for example, the, like your RSA secure ID or a soft token on your on your phone or push notification to act as a second factor to 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 enhance security. But there's an adaptive portion to this too, right? The ability to understand behavior. So just because I logged into the AWS IAM console with the right credentials at 9 o'clock in the morning may not be a problem, but let's say there are 30 authentications, they were all successful, it all happened within the span of five minutes at 9 o'clock. That might be a problem. So the ability to understand behavior and, and look for 
um, anomalies to be able to trigger notifications so that people can, can catch weird behaviors and things like that. That's part of the adaptive um, um, feature of, of the product. And then moving on to mobility, as I said earlier, we now, most of us use our phone. I mean, I'm totally functional on my phone um, without um, using my laptop or for a short period of time. don't really like typing on my phone, but hey, managing the device is just as important when it comes to enterprise application access. You're downloading thick clients from various apps. The data is coming in. You might be downloading files. So the ability to, to manage and limit and restrict access on those, on those devices is very important. And then finally, you see developer SDKs at the very end. That's sort of the platform play that I'm talking about, right, where you're building stuff um, on top of Okta. Um, that's becoming a, a huge part of, of, of our product. Um, and a lot of our customers are, are actually building their, their apps on top of Okta, using us for, for the identity layer to benefit from those six circles on the left-hand side so they don't actually have to worry about it themselves. Speaking of certification, um, Patrick mentioned some of it, and, and he highlighted something that was very important. The fact that AWS is certified um, and, and assured for all those things doesn't mean the products that are built on top of it would necessarily have that. And for us, being a security company, an identity company, we, we've invested a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're, we're also comply to a lot of these regulations and, and certifications. And as you can see, a lot of these are also vertical specific, things like HIPAA and, and FedRAM, for example. Gartner um, basically came up with this category called identity as a service. And, and we, we, I, I still remember early on when we talked to them, there was no such category. And, and we've basically created this new product type um, called identity as a service. And, and it's been around for three years, and we're the only vendor that has been in the upper quadrant, upper upper right quadrant, um, as, as a leader every single year of, of its existence. So we're very proud of that. Um, we, we certainly see a lot of growth in this space because that's what everyone is is, is wanting to do. Is, is they want to look into identity um, as a service, and as a result, you know, throughout the growth of, of our company, we've been able to capture a lot of. Um, customers, thousands and thousands of enterprise customers, and a lot of the names here are, are household names. But if you notice, um, we're not bound by one geography. We're not bound by one vertical. Um, we're able to attack the market and really um, help a lot of our customers in different verticals and different, different parts of the world um, to, to basically satisfy their requirements, both for their internal employee environment, but also um, for the external facing apps that they're building. Now, a big part of the, you know, the reason of our success is, is on our application network. And you know, this is something that we're, we're very proud of. It's a catalog of over 5,000 apps. And if you think about AWS, the integration that you need to do with, with, with Amazon, if, if there's nobody there to help you, AWS has great documentation. You can go and follow it, build out your single sign-on integration, build out your provisioning, uh, uh, role provisioning, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, everyone's looking at the same set of API. So we thought, well, since we're the provisioning engine, we're the identity engine, why wouldn't we do the integration and, and just make it a pre-integrated solution so everyone can benefit from it? And that's exactly the approach we do for 5,000-plus um, 5, applications, and the catalog is still growing. We're working with ISVs all the time. We're getting new customer demand all the time to really build out um, the application catalog. And, um, you know, because of that, you know, with the catalog, there's a, there's a variety of integrations, too. And it really depends on um, what the application is, what sometimes what the vendor supports. And, and we're able to do um, very, you know, sort of vendor-specific single sign-on solution. We know exactly what the ISV expects. And we'll be able to target that and build out whether it's SAML or WSFED or other types of protocols. It's a problem between Okta and the ISV, not you, Mr. Customer, or Mrs. Customer, right? Mobile apps, we also have to handle mobile application getting pushed into your device, if it happens to be an enterprise app, how to push it out, how to do single sign-on, how to also handle mobility management around the content and files and things that ends up being on your phone so that we can, for example, wipe them when someone leaves the company. And then finally, provisioning. The number kind of goes down, not because provisioning is not important, but a lot of it, for us, it depends on what the ISV supports. So, um, more and more ISVs, more and more applications are now supporting provisioning. And, and part of my goal and, and Okta's goal is also to go and evangelize how important it is 
to support single sign-on, to support mobility management, to support provisioning as you're building out your app um, as, as an ISV. So we go out and, and help people actually build out um, all, all, all the integrations. So now let's talk about AWS. This is sort of the meat of, of, of this webinar. And a lot of you are probably facing this, this dilemma. And let's kind of focus on maybe the right-hand side. Um, if you look at an Amazon account, it'd be great if you only have one. Um, it's a little easier to manage. Obviously, Amazon itself supports username, password, password management, and all that. But as, as a lot of you start to grow, sometimes within a department, for whatever reason, maybe it's authorization or segregation of duty reasons, um, you may have a need to have multiple Amazon accounts. And, and we see a lot of that happening with our customers. Um, I, I only put three here because it's a PowerPoint, but I have seen people with over 200, 300 Amazon accounts within a single enterprise. Sometimes it's because there's a need. Oftentimes it's because people started to, you know, do things without working with IT, without having a central IT governing access and things like that, and they kind of go off and, and, and have their own Amazon account. Um, that happens a lot. Still, it's a use case that we have to tackle. But the other main reason that we see this buildup of, of Amazon accounts is through M&A. Um, so companies, you know, start, you know, joining each other and uh, through mergers and acquisitions, and you end up having um, uh, basically a lot of these accounts um, that are running there. Now, even with the SAML with SSO integration, you still end up having a pretty complex infrastructure. If these accounts are not actually related to each other, um, as, 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 as IT, if you're trying to monitor access, you're monitoring a lot of different individual accounts. Um, if I need access to 10 of these Amazon accounts, there's basically 10 sets of credentials that you have to manage, and, and it just becomes a little overwhelming, I mean, especially when you start hitting the number like 100 or 200 accounts. Um, it becomes almost impossible to see what's going on or to even shut off access of, of one individual. It's going to be very hard to manage. And that's sort of where the, the, the cross-account role really comes in. And apologize for the arrows. Uh, the original slide had animation, um, but, but everything is, is kind of flattened out. So let's focus on sort of the blue arrows, and especially the one in the middle that says assume role policy. So really the idea is you have um, a lot of Amazon accounts what we're going to do is have you know, the ability to go from one account to another. So some of you may be familiar with sort of this role switching capability within Amazon, going from one account, switching role to another account. And really that allows you to, to kind of jump around. And it is this jumping that allows us to build more of a hub and spoke environment within Amazon, right? So the end goal is, is to build relationship, kind of a federated model amongst these Amazon accounts so that a user doesn't necessarily have to log into, in this example, um, doesn't have to log into the retail account and, and log into the identity account. Um, he can log into the identity account and from within that, if there's a trust relationship that's built via these cross account role, I can then assume role or switch role from the identity account into the retail account. And it makes it easier for the end user. He doesn't have to go out and log into a, a different place. Um, he can then basically jump from the identity account to the retail account. And, and that's sort of what the end user experience would be. If you have Okta, you build a single sign-on experience, a trust relationship between Okta and the identity account. So let's look at the identity account as that hub. And then you build a whole bunch of spokes out of it so that the identity account ultimately manage everybody uh, everybody's access. And the single sign-on relationship is between that and Okta. Once you've logged in, because of all the assume role policies that you've built with all the spokes account, the user is then able to just switch roles to the, to the place where they really want to go to. Um, it makes the user experience a little easier. Um, it also makes, from an IT standpoint now, you can, you can basically govern access, manage access from this single identity account rather than have to look into um, um, all the all the all the spokes account. Now the end picture looks kind of like this, and this is really the recommendation from from Amazon as you're building out these sort of multiple account topology is to have a centralized identity account that really deals with all of the users that are coming in, whether they're admins or individual users, and have a relationship that goes 
from that identity account to all the spokes. In this case, as an example, there's a sales account, there's a retail account. So these are separate AWS accounts. But you can then leverage these cross-account roles um, to actually do all of this. So what you end up having as an end picture is something that looks kind of like this. Very high level, right? You have a, a single sign-on trust, a SAML trust that's built from that centralized Amazon account with Okta. And then once you do this, the Amazon side is taken care of via uh, role switching or account switching through these cross-account roles. But what's also good then now, the benefit of having Okta is you get all the goodness from Okta. So um, you can integrate with an existing Active Directory or LDAP, leverage that for um, um, user access and also profile update. You can then also leverage things like groups and user attributes to drive authorization into the Okta to say who have access to what. Um, you can leverage Okta for second factor authentication for someone to get into Amazon, um, depending on who the user is. Maybe if he or she is an admin, there needs to be second factor, um, but for other developers, there need not be. Um, and then also giving them single sign-on experience. On the right-hand side, the single sign-on is built in within Amazon. But on the left-hand side, anyone that's using Amazon, there's a good chance you're using a lot of other products too. So then Okta becomes that, that, that single sign-on portal um, for your end user. So now as an IT person, I'm really just looking at Okta and that one single identity account to really look at day-to-day -day access of users. Now, there's a little bit of homework that you need to do, right, to build out that relationship on the right-hand side. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. But there, there is going to be a little bit of thinking. At the end of the day, if you're managing 15, 20, or 100 Amazon accounts, there is some complexity to it. So in order to build out that right side, that topology of having the spokes and, the, and a single hub, there is a little bit of thinking um, in, in, in how to actually arrange that. But once you have it, technically, it's actually very easy um, to link those things up. So with that, there's one little slide I want to talk about before I go into a demo. Um, we also have a command line access tool. So every, everything we've talked about has been very web-based. Um, there's also a command line tool that's open source. Uh, basically, it allows you to use um, the um, command line AWS tools, tying it to Okta. So a user would be authenticating against Okta. And the user interface would allow you to basically select the role that you want. Um, we'll go and fetch the right token, put it in the, in, in the local file, and then you can then have access um, via the AWS command line tool. Um, so just want to throw it in there. Um, it is on our, our public GitHub site. Any, anyone's free to go and take a look at. And, and we're definitely going to be making enhancements to it, too, as, as more and more features show up. So with that, I'd like to jump into a demo. So everything that I'm about to do, by the way, we have um, an offering through what we call the Okta Cloud Connect program. So is is basically a, a, a free offering for one app. So you can sign up for the Okta Cloud Connect for AWS, um, free for the AWS and as many users as you want. It's unlimited users, unlimited time. You can use it just for one app and try it out. So very easy, just come, come to the page, okta.com slash AWS, and you can sign up for this. So first thing I want to do is log into AWS to show you how these cross-account roles are actually structured and how you actually built them. So I'm, my whole environment is actually protected by AWS. So um, I'm going to log in as myself into this Okta tenant. This is a very typical Okta view. Uh, this is obviously a demo environment. Um, if, if you're an actual, you know, any really productive end user of Okta like myself, um, let's see if I still have. Um, this would be, this is actually my real Okta login page when I go to work. There's about 150 apps here. Um, and, and that's why I'm so productive, because I, it's very easy for me to get to applications, single sign-on, everything is built in. So I'm going to click on this to get into um, the identity account. So the identity account, like, like in the slides, this is the, the hub account. This is where all the, all the cross-account roles are, are being um, defined so that you can go from here to all the other um, Amazon accounts. So I'm going to log in, and I'll go through the Okta setup afterwards so you know how I actually am able to single sign on into this thing. But what we want to focus on is, is really look at um, the roles um, that are being defined. So um, if you look under identity and access management and click on the roles, what we'll focus on, and let's focus on these two, basically the retail and the sales 
um, S3 admin, retail S3 and sales um, S3 admin roles. Now, rather than starting from here, let me take you to the other Amazon account to kind of show you exactly how this whole thing works. So kind of going backwards. Now, the way I've built this, me as, as um, an, an IAM admin, um, I'm actually able to switch role um, to one of these accounts. Um, so I'm actually leveraging the feature as I'm describing to you what the feature is. So now I'm actually in the Agni Sales um, AWS account. And in that, I've got a couple roles defined. I have an IAM admin for high privileged access in this account. Um, but I've also created something called an S3 admin role here. Now, what this role gives is right now it's Amazon S3 full access. Now, obviously, this is where you build your complex policy. And not just one. You can build multiples of these. But as an example, I'm just showing you one. So there's a base policy here for access within this Amazon account. And I'm basically allowing full um, S3 access. So cancel this out. This is an important piece of info. Because as I build the cross-account role relationship, I need this role ARN. Um, so taking this, what I'm going to do now is go back to the, the, the basically the Acme Identity account. So you see currently I'm in this, and I logged in through this. So I'm basically going back into the Acme Identity account to show you how we built this cross-account relationship. Um, now, if I look at the S sales S3 admin role here, what this role is meant for is we've attached a policy that allows us to carry out the assume role operation. And when I look at the policy, it is allowing me to do this action. And the resource that I'm going to is the S3 admin role for the Acme sales account. Um, in the policy definition, you need to use the unique ID, the identifier, the number. As an end user, if you're specifying the role uh, to switch role to a specific account, you can actually use the, the user-friendly display name, um, which in this case is, is Acme Sales. So from the IT perspective, you need to know um, the account number. But for the end user, you can actually choose something else. And I think the great thing with AWS is once you've done the switch roles a couple of times, it actually remembers the history. So it makes it a little easier. So now this is the relationship from the identity account to the spoke account, how we're, we're doing the assume role. So if I go back to Okta, I'll show you the rest of the setup. Um, so in the Acme Corp, uh, not only am I an end user to get into Amazon via the chiclet, I'm also an admin in Okta. So everything, like I said, is cloud-based. You do everything from within the admin environment. So first things first, that 5,000 plus application catalog, we have AWS as one of the apps. So if you go to Add App, um, it's very easy for you to add the application. Now you notice there is only one app here, only Amazon, because this specific tenant um, started off with as, as an Octa Cloud Connect um, tenant. If you look at kind of a normal tenant, this is my normal demo tenant. You see here I've got actually 5,000 apps. So as you go beyond the Octa Cloud Connect program, um, and, and you, you basically pay for the additional applications, we then open up the catalog for you. Um, and it's very easy if you want to, let's say, if I'm just starting to use Slack. Slack is a certified and Okta Verify product with SAML and provisioning. So this is very easy for you to, to see, right? So go back to the Amazon one that I'm working on. So what we do here is, is we need to do two things. One is set up the SAML relationship. And the other thing that we need to do is, is basically to set up the, the import capability so we can import the roles. So if I go to the application tabs, and because I've already set this up, um, you will see a lot of Amazon instances here. Now, it, it's, it's interesting that, that you're seeing a lot of these. The only one that I'm going to focus on is the identity account. But what you can technically do is build individual relationships. So you could have Okta tying to individual account and have 10, 15, 20, or maybe 100 of these. And as you can see, there's, you know, the scaling becomes a bit of a, a problem. And we're actually looking at potentially solving that problem too. But right now, if you build this cross-account topology in Amazon, you really only have to focus on, on one. And really, everything that I'm showing you so far, it's based on this one Amazon app instance and the configuration that's behind it. And when you at the application, we walk you through a wizard. 
um, to kind of go through the setup. So you provide some basic information. Um, you provide the AWS login URL. This really tells us um, which Amazon account you're going to uh, with the account number being there. Um, once you've provided this basic info, you can then go and set up SAML. And we provide instructions here um, and guidance. There's some information you need from Okta, um, IDP metadata. We basically give you guidance to go and set this up on the AWS side as well. So even if you know nothing about SAML, this is very easy to set up. Just follow the instruction. And in the same way, when you actually go to set up provisioning, we also give you guidance. So this gives us the ability to call AWS APIs and import the roles that you've defined. So very quick, you can probably do this in less than 10 minutes, provided that you're the admin um, of, of Amazon and you have all the credit information and you can log into the console um, to set up single sign-on. Um, once you're done with that, um, the roles are then actually imported into Okta. And now you need to associate people with this account. Now, there are different ways of doing it. Um, if you look at this account, this was the person that logged in um, via um, initially to get into the, the, the IAM console to show you all the policies and all that. This person is actually an IAM admin. Um, the second part of this demo, I'm going to log in as John, who is an end user. So now, when I assign an app, to a user. You'll be basically as an administrator, this is what you get to select um, is the SAML user roles. And these are the roles that we've imported um, from the IAM console. Same list that you saw, right? So now this gives you the ability to build, um, um, to basically assign specific roles and different roles to different users. Now, this is a one-to-one -one assignment. It's an indiv individual assignment to John Doe. Obviously, it doesn't scale if you have actually 10,000 users. So we have other ways of doing automated provisioning. If you look at Steven, Steven's actually assigned the app, and you see there's no cross here because I, I can't actually get rid of this app for Steven. And the reason is Steven's assignment is done via a group. So now group is another first-class citizen within Okta. It can be a group that's defined within Okta, but it can also be a group that you, we leverage from a different source, like an Active Directory or an LDAP, or in some cases, maybe even HR products um, like, um, like Workday or Altipro. So we get these group constructs in, and you can tie assignments to these, um, to these groups. So if I click into this, this will take me to the IAM admin group, and the group has a bunch of users. So now I'm managing users on the group side. I'm also managing app assignment from the group, not directly to the user, but it, it, it's piggybacking on the, uh, the group structure. And here, when I assign an app to a user that's a member of this group, I'm only making them identity IAM users. So this is, this is how Steven, the user, actually got access into the IAM console, is via the group assignment. So as you can see now, you can, you can, there are so many different ways to play with this. Um, like I said, the group structure can be something that comes out of another system. We also allow you to build rules to create groups within Okta, leveraging attributes. So you can say, hey, if the user's job code or job title is or contains sales, he or she will be a member of the sales group. And now you've got a list of users based on sort of dynamic values that are coming in. And then from that group, you can then um, um, assign the app um, to those users, and it doesn't have to be just one app, right? This is the way for you to, to really carry out the automation, um, to, to build out the provisioning so that it's easier for you to manage, leveraging groups rather than worrying about individual assignments all the time, which is probably what you do today. A lot of you do today with AWS when you're dealing with the accounts um, separately. So now that you've seen the whole setup in Okta, I'm going to go to a separate browser, go to a different browser, um, and log in as John, because John is really the end user. So. Here's a different browser. I'm logging in as John. As you can see, it's the same Okta tenant. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and sign in as John. Now, he can have access through the identity account. Um, the before tab is what you would see. Had we built the individual um, trust relationship with the separate accounts, John would probably see something like this. And if you have 20 of these, John will probably see 20 of these. And 
The way we look at it is that's probably not the best way you want to roll this out. With the cross account rolls, now we can have just a single point of access for John. And as John clicks into this, remember the checkbox that I had for John, the three roles that showed up for John. Now John is being presented with those three roles. And, and this is the role that's defined in the hub account, the hub um, Amazon account. So let's say I choose sales S3 admin. I sign in. Now I'm in that hub identity account with the sales 3 admin role. And you know, typically if you were to set this up, uh, most end users probably won't get to do a whole lot in that hub account. It's really a, a hop for them to get to the eventual AWS account that they want to get to. And to do that, because now I'm, I'm a sales, 3, a sales S3 admin, remember the policy that says anyone that's a sales S3 admin has the ability to assume role and, and basically switch role. So now I can basically switch to one of these. Now that's the role history. Let's say I didn't have any of this. I'm joining the very first time. You probably have to give um, um, you know, John some instructions. But if I do switch roles, I can actually type in um, the friendly name here um, without you know, have to remember that, that 12 or 15 digit number. Um, kind of pick a nice color for it. Um, I can then do switch roles. And now, as you can see, I am now part of the Acme sales account. I came in via the Acme identity account. And I have the S3 admin role. So you see how that just streamlines the entire process. As an administrator, you can now control access by just, you know, everyone that has access to any of the spokes would have gone through this. They have to go through um, the identity account, the hub account. And from the AWS side, you can see access through there. You know which role they, they've assumed and, and, and basically which, which account, AWS account they've gone to. On the Okta side, you can also control access very easily. And you can tie access to other attributes, other groups that are coming in from the identity environment. So now you've built a really robust infrastructure to, to support your complex AWS deployment. Um, leveraging Okta. And again, everything I've shown you today with AWS being a single app, you can try that out by signing up um, the Okta Cloud Connect uh, program and, and have that org for you to just play around with. It's a full feature tenant, so if you have AD, you have LDAP, you want to tie that to, to, to Okta, you can do all that. MFA, all that, is, it's functional. So, um, you know, hopefully this gives you a, a high-level explanation. It is. It, it, once you get the hang of it and know how to build the relationship, this is actually a pretty, pretty simple way, but in my opinion, a very robust and secure way to, to pull all your AWS accounts together. Um, so with that, maybe I'll, I'll hand it back to, to Patrick for, um, for questions. So let, let's start with some questions. So Stephen, the, the first question uh, I have for you is, uh, this comes in, uh, does this require any hardware in our data center? Um, it does not require any hardware in your data center. Um, again, Okta as a product itself um, runs fully in the cloud. So um, the, the only thing that we might touch is if you have an on-prem Active Directory that's, let's say, running in your data center, running behind the firewall, or you have an LDAP. Um, and if you need uh, to connect to that, we have a, uh, an, an agent that needs to run behind the firewall to be able to talk to AD or LDAP. Uh, and the good thing about these agents is they don't need to sit at the DMZ or we don't need to punch any hole in the firewall. It's, 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 it's architected in such a way that it only makes outbound calls. It does long polling against Okta. And the agents are very small. Um, in, in the Windows case, it, it runs as a Windows service. In the LDAP case, it's a Java daemon um, so that we can basically communicate um, to your AD and LDAP that's sitting on-prem. But no hardware. I mean, let alone you know, soft, even the software piece is extremely small. But definitely no, no, no hardware requirement for you to to do anything there to to basically roll out Okta. Uh, as a follow up, so you mentioned uh, integrating Okta with Active Directory on premises. Um, is there always a requirement for a directory, um, uh, like an Active Directory, if they don't have uh, some customers don't have AD or LDAP available to them? Is that a requirement? It is not a requirement. So as I showed you, the demo that I did, um, I only had seven users in Okta, um, demo users, and those are all local users. 
So in fact, what, what's really good with, with Okta as a product is it creates that virtual identity provider, a, a virtual cloud directory for you. So if, if you have AD, great, we can import the users in there. If you have two ADs in, in a complex environment, they're disjoint, or if you have a forest, we can get all that in there. If you have AD and LDAP combo, we can also do that. You may have actually AD and local user combo, and, and you'd be like, well, why, why would I have that? Think contractors and partners, right? You probably don't want those people to be in your AD because then all of a sudden they have access to SharePoint and VPN and all that. So Okta then can be that local cloud directory just for these users that don't belong to AD, so you run it in the hybrid environment. And then finally, you can just have a pure Okta environment. Yeah, there was a time when Active Directory was everywhere. I think in a way it still is. But a lot of newer companies, people that are just a total Mac shop, they don't have a need to have AD, they are using Okta as their core directory. That's the only directory they have. So, so to, your, to your question, no, there, there is no need to, um, to, to have AD or LDAP um, in order to use Okta. And a lot of our customers don't. Um, they just use us as, as that central core um, corporate directory for, for their employees. Great. Uh, one more AD follow-up question there. Does Okta support uh, multiple Active Directory forests? Yeah, so I yeah, kind of answered that. Yeah, we do. We do, and it's, it's a, basically the, the AD agent that I talked about earlier, um, it, you can deploy multiples of those, and, and within the Okta environment, we allow you to create relationship with multiple sort of logical forests. Um, so um, we can pull all those users in, um, and the great thing is, you know, oftentimes we see this in an M&A situation. People have different nomenclatures, different domain names. Um, you can pull all those into Okta. You can continue to stick with that, but in, in many M&A situations, they want to start um, consolidating um, the, the people's domain names so that everyone has the same username and login um, um, based on the parent company. Okta can, can provide that sort of bridge where the, the underlying AD can still have the old UPN, the old SAM account name, but then when people log into Okta, we have one extra level of mapping. And that's important because when you think about provisioning into outside products, uh, we want that name consolidation so that you don't start pushing old um, domain names into various um, new apps that you're rolling out. So yeah, we, we actually do a very good job in, in consolidating complex um, AD infrastructure. And, and the AD agent is, is, is very good at doing that. It's also HA um, ready. So um, that, that is a huge part of our business. So we invest a lot in that area. Great. So other, um, if we have an RSA secure, this is questions for you, Stephen. If we have an RSA secure ID as our two-factor solution for VPN and other things, uh, can AWS integrate with the RSA secure ID? Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you think, and this is another great reason when we work with AWS and, and many ISVs, you know, th this is a, a, a top requirement that, hey, we've got a corporate um, second factor solution. If you tie your authentication with Okta, then Okta becomes the authentication um, mechanism, and we have the ability to actually integrate with a lot of these uh, third-party vendors. So to, to just list out a few RSA is, is one of them. Um, Symantec VIP we also support. Um, if you happen to be using um, Yubico, YubiKey, we support that. Um, if you happen to be using dual security, we also support integration with that. And by the way, if you don't have any of that and you just want an MFA solution, Okta itself is a full-blown MFA solution because adaptive MFA multi-factor is, is, is part of the product stack. Um, so we go from security question to SMS to um, a six-digit soft token on your phone all the way up to push notification. So we give you a, a free big variety uh, of choices when it comes to second factor. Um, but yes, integrating with RSA is, is, is definitely something that we support. And besides the second factor, can Okta be used as a standalone uh, password uh, yeah. manager? So because we have the directory, um, um, so for a lot of users, their credentials would be locally stored within Okta, and we obviously manage the entire password lifecycle there. What's really good is if you actually have users in AD, for example, and AD password reset has always been a challenge, um, and it turns it, 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 tend, it tends to turn into a lot of help desk calls for a lot of companies. Um, we actually have, our integration with AD actually allows Okta to drive the, the AD password 
um, life cycle. So, you know, we are aware of expiration. We can force the user to go and change the password. And when you change the password, actually, second factor can kick in if you want to apply that policy, you know, to make sure that I have a phone and it's a push notification before you allow me to change the password. So password management for passwords in Okta, password management for passwords that are, passwords that are sitting in Active Directory. Uh, we support both of those. So uh, this is, uh, here's a question, I'll, I'll take this one. If I'm using a central identity account, is there a way to delegate the creation of roles to the spoke accounts for admin access uh, to the specific accounts? So now, uh, as Stephen was mentioning, that is, you do have to do a bit of homework, but like everything in AWS, it is an API, so you can program, programmatically create the roles in the other accounts um, once you get to a very high level of sophistication. But that capability does not exist uh, natively. So, uh, Stephen, what, what does, how does Okta help when uh, your corporation has a lot of contractors who are not in your corporate directory? What's the, what's the best case scenario there? Yeah, so I, I kind of talked a little bit about that, right? Um, the, the beauty is when, when you build a relationship with, um, you know, in, in this context, we're thinking about AWS, right? And the trust is built between the, the AWS identity account and Okta. AWS really doesn't care where their user is coming from. All it knows is, hey, if Okta tells me a user is locked in, I trust Okta and I'll let that person in. But on the Okta side, we've got the flexibility of figuring out who, who's coming in. So um, as I said earlier, uh, a lot of companies, when it comes to contractors and partners and outside users or part-time workers, um, they don't create them in AD. They don't create them in LDAP because those are corporate directories. They'll just create them within Okta and you manage the life cycle um, within Okta, and in which case they wouldn't log in with their domain credentials because they don't have it. But um, you know, when you create a user in Okta, they'll get a registration email from Okta saying, "Hey, you've been created. Come and set your security question, security um, picture, and and set your password, which is enforced by the Okta um, policy." And then you use Okta. These contractors would use Okta to log in. But the other features are there, right? If you, for a specific partner or a contractor, you want to enforce MFA, you can also do that. So Okta allows you to kind of, kind of, you know, split the population into sort of your internal employees versus outsiders that still need to access um, resources that that the employees may need to to have. So it's a very very common use case, and and a lot of people, you know, really love us for that because without that, it's very difficult. Like right? once you've built the trust with one directory, it's hard to split it, but Okta allows you to actually split that. So it's, it's a very useful feature, and, and like I said, a lot of our customers use, use that for, for contractors. Great. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, besides SAML, does Okta support any other protocols like OpenID, Connect, OAuth? Um, is SAML the only thing? No, so, no, definitely not. I mean, if you look at the, the overall landscape. SAML is popular because I think, you know, and again, having, having done this long enough, SAML came out right at, at the right time when SaaS apps were also starting um, to blossom. So it became kind of the de facto protocol for web single sign-on. But as you look into other devices, you look into mobile, you, you look at maybe even API, uh, newer technologies are there. So um, we also support um, OAuth and OpenID Connect, um, you know, for people that are building newer apps building, you know, single page apps. Um, those are the kind of technology that, that people would use for single sign-on. From a mobile standpoint, you, you absolutely have to use OAuth um, because you don't, you stop having that, that uh, um, the benefits of having cookies in the browser, right? These are native clients. Um, but even on the website, it's not just SAML. We've, we've done proprietary integrations. We've done a lot of WSFED integrations, obviously with Microsoft products like SharePoint and Office 365, it, it has to be WSFED. So we take care of all that. But remember, you, we, don't, it, we don't want you to code. We do all the coding. So all these technology, even when we offer it, they're, they're abstracted out in a way that it, it's a couple clicks and copy and paste of, of URLs and endpoints that would allow you to do the integration. But we absolutely do support um, 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 those other technologies. And I think that's another good reason for using a cloud identity provider is you as a customer, you're not responsible for catching up with the technology. We have to because that's our business and we do that every day. Um, so we, we definitely, um, yeah, touch into some of those other areas. Great. So um, 
Another question is, so we talked about Federation and AWS console. How, about, how does Okta support uh, Cognito API Gateway? And also, um, how about AWS Workspaces, our virtual desktop? Yeah, no, that's a great question. It's kind of a good segue from, from that last question that you asked. So in sort of the Cognito and API Gateway space, again, these are, these are different kind of clients coming in. Um, so API Gateway, Cognito, um, they, they both support, um, you know, basically using, uh, uh, um, using Lambda to build out and, and a separate authentication and authorization mechanism. So um, we are actually currently looking at, at a lot of those um, because people are asking. But basically, you, you will integrate uh, with Okta via OpenID Connect and OAuth um, to, to integrate with API Gateway and, and also Cognito. And, and really, depending on the use case, there's no one broad stroke answer because the you know, Cognito and the, the API Gateway can, can be used in so many different ways. So are we just dealing with authentication or, um, or authorization? Um, it, it's case by case, but by leveraging Lambda, you can basically um, do the integration with Okta pretty seamlessly. Um, in terms of workspaces, um, we've done integration with workspaces. The, the interesting piece about workspace is that you know it, it, a lot of that runs in in sort of a Windows environment. So the there's kind of the primary authentication that typically goes via AD, um, and, and workspaces does that. Um, for a lot of the joint customers that we've seen. Um, it's, it's on the second factor piece um, where, where Workspaces integrates with uh, via Radius to do a, um, a second factor authentication and uh, for, for the secondary challenge. Um, so we support the, the MFA piece um, with, with Okta where the, and, and the primary auth will, will remain um, sort of a direct, active directory integration with, with Workspaces. But you know, we, we also work very closely with the directory services team at AWS, and we, we're constantly looking at um, ways to, to, to improve uh, and, and see what's, what's coming new. So um, we, we definitely have, have support for workspaces today. And um, you know, if anybody has, has questions you know, later on as they're rolling those things out, um, certainly you know, feel free to reach out to us, um, and, and we'd be happy to talk about it. Thanks. Uh, one more quick, we have time for one more quick question, which I'll cover. Is, is, is there any cost associated with Okta uh, using the identity account structure? And not necessarily, the question is about cost around the identity account structure. So AWS accounts are always free. Uh, the IAM roles and users are always free. Uh, but do pay attention. Our, our, our money billing information is public. Uh, so you do pay for compute resources and S3 and storage. So always double check that. But I am roles and account setups are free. So there's no additional cost from uh, setting up the identity account structure Stephen covered. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming uh, and attending. Um, I hope you uh, learned a lot. And um, as we mentioned already, we will be sending out uh, this deck. Uh, and this uh, session is recorded. So thanks again. And I'd like to thank uh, Stephen for joining me today.